Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to this session today. Um, for anyone new who's watching, I just want to introduce myself right off the bat. My name is Ursula Gullo, and I've been an artist for about 20 years. I've been doing this YouTube channel for about a year now. I do live um, painting sessions every Monday morning. So um, you can join me live here or check out a recording later. Um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do. And um, like any videos, give a thumbs up would be great. Um, share this with your friends. Um, I'll be talking about a lot of things today and sharing a bunch of links. And um, I'm a little worried that maybe I have too much happening. <laughs> Um, so we'll see what happens, but um, any links that I share here um, will be included in the video description below. So um, if you're watching this in the future, you can check that. Um, and sometimes you can set up the video so you can see the chat as it's happening also as people are commenting. Um, but I am really happy to have the opportunity to do this video today um, on November 2nd, the day before uh, the big election day. And um, I was just thinking about voting and how I feel really lucky that I get to vote. Hi, Jamie. And thinking about the women who um, marched and fought for that right. Um, so think about the suffragists the suffrage movement. Um, and when I think of that, I always associate white with the movement, even though um, in doing some research, I've learned um, more symbols, about more symbols and colors and things associated with the movement. I'm sure a lot of you out there know probably way more than I do. Um, I feel like I've you know, grown up taking it for granted that I could vote and, um, yeah, I just think it's it's really good history to get to know, to get into. So we'll talk about that a little bit today. Um, and also we're going to talk about white and we're going to be exploring white and all the wonderful things you can do, creating textures, um, building white on white, mixed media, artworks and projects. And um, you'll see I have just like so much stuff <laughs> over here. I've just got tons of things um, on hand to work with. I've got my tea. And um, we'll just see how this goes. So to prepare some things you'll want, um, you might want to have, this is a great um, opportunity today to work over something. So I did this in a different class. I don't know if y'all remember. <laughs> I don't even remember which one it was, but I'm going to paint over it. I mean, I like it, but you know, I'll just paint over it. So you might have an old artwork that you want to paint over. Um, if you're working with acrylics, make sure you're painting over an acrylic painting and not an oil painting. Um, because the oil, the acrylics don't stick to the oil paint. So you'll have some trouble there. Um, so I'm going to paint over an old painting. Um, I have a couple of canvases on hand that, you know, I'm going to work with. I mean, this is already a pretty cool, like, white on white exploration of texture without even meaning to do it. This kind of happened. But I have these on hand. Um, and then I have, just for something different, I have some regular paper, like a thicker cardstock that might be able to take a little um, wear and tear and a wood panel. We'll see what happens. Um, so you might want to have a few um, substrates going at the same time today. Um, because like I said, we might get messy at times. Um, you might need things to dry. Um, we're going to be working with paint, um, obviously with white paint. If you have gesso, awesome. I don't even know where mine is. Oh, there it is. Um, here, let me grab it. <laughs> okay. 
Um, this is just like basic acrylic gesso. This is a primer. Um, you can paint, it's, it's like a quick and easy way to paint over stuff. I'm gonna start actually just painting over this and I'm gonna keep talking. So if you have, like I said, if you have um, any, I'm actually gonna pour it. If you have any old artwork you wanna paint over, if you have gesso, great, or just take some white paint. Look what I'm gonna do. This is, this is, this is my um, very delicate and nuanced um, <laughs> studio practice. All right, I'm gonna take a big brush, brush over that. So I'll just keep talking while I'm doing this. Um, we're gonna be working with paint, we're gonna be working with found things, any kinds of silver or gold baubles you might have. Um, I love the word baubles. <laughs> um, this is a good day for that. So already, look at how cool this looks. Like just doing that over a painting. Um, Paulette, hi, so how did you know we'd need a distraction today? I know, right? <laughs> but even just this, like painting over something, like an old painting with some gesso or white paint, it really brings out any textures that you might already have going. Um, so this is a really fun thing to do with your old paintings. Now, another technique that we don't have time for and I don't have the apparatus for, but you could think about doing, if you have an old painting with a lot of layers like this, let this dry, get a power sander and sand away all the texture and you'll see like really cool colors, things um, emerging from the layers underneath. Um, and it's a nice kind of subtractive, reductive um, process. So yeah, just to get started, maybe do that. While you're doing that, I am going to talk a little bit about some artists and famous artworks using white on white. I am using some Naples yellow because it's very light in color. And I'm going to mix that with some white also. But maybe one of the first white on white paintings in European history is um, Kazimalevich's uh, white on white painting in the early 1900s. And I'm gonna include a link to it. There is a Wikipedia entry on it. Um, he was concerned with, he was what's called a supremacist. He, he coined this term um, uh, supremacist. The uh, supremacism in art and later um, constructivism kind of took precedence with that. But um, let me find the thing. But this is a painting from 1918 that he did. Um, and I'm just going to include the wiki link here. Hey, Sally. How cool to see you. Um, so he did these white on white works. Um, it says here, portrayed off center at an angle on a ground, which also, which is also a white square and a slightly warmer tone. So he's playing with, um, cool white versus warm white here. Um, 
Although the artwork is stripped of most detail, brush strokes are evident in this painting and the artist tried to make it look as if the tilted square is coming out of the canvas. He intended the painting to evoke a feeling of floating with the color white symbolizing infinity and the slight tilt of the square suggests movements. Um, so that's a really interesting thing about white is also thinking about it as a symbol in your artwork. Um, it's always been associated with um, new newness, um, innocence, purity. For some reason, I don't like that association, <laughs> but I like the idea of it being a, um, a new ground for change and for starting new things. Um, another artist, Louise Nevelson, um, she did assemblage work. I'm going to just include um, a link to her. Um, she said she used white on white, um, saying that white was the color that summoned the early morning and emotional promise. And I really like that. I am including a link to um, an installation she did using all white. Um, okay, so I have some questions from Bet. Can gesso go over an oil painting? If you are using an acrylic based gesso, which you probably are, most gessos, most primers are acrylic based. It will say acrylic on the label. You can't use it. I mean, you could if it, if it gets on there, great, but it's not going to stay. It's going to crack off. Acrylic based things can't be put over oil. Um, but try it and see if it works. You might have an oil based primer. Um, in which case you definitely can use that. I think it will dry a lot slower and you won't be able to adhere things into it as well. But I say just try it out. I've actually never experimented with painting with acrylic on top of oil, um, but I know it's not archival. It's not, it's not gonna adhere to the oil underneath it. It's just going to um, eventually crack off. But see, I think that that could be a really cool, potentially a cool look. So who knows? Um, but yeah, technically, no, you can't put an acrylic primer over an oil thing, unless it's a super duper primer. If it's a latex primer, you can. If anyone else knows, has insight on that, has worked at an art supply store perhaps, um, and wants to give some um, expertise, knowledge on that, feel free to type your answer in there. Um, okay. Now, speaking of materials and, um, you know, great, uh, a really great example of an artist who is local, um, her work is in a local gallery. Um, her name is Rachel McGinnis, and she uses old quilts and repurposes them. I'm sending a link out to her. Um, there's a gallery of images that you can click through. A lot of them are monochromatic. Um, these are generally large wall pieces that she makes. Um, and she'll take apart the fibers of the quilt. She'll use um, acrylic paint with it. Um, the first image here um, is a deconstructed quilt in acrylic, 78 by inches by 70 inches wide. Um, and yeah, if you click through that, the other thing that's notable about her work is that she, you know, that you see holes and you see, um, you know, these, uh, holes <laughs> in them. So when the work hangs against the gap, the wall, it casts a really interesting shadow against the wall. It's hung a slightly off of the wall. And so there's these really cool shadows that get 
um, cast that way. So that's a really fun thing to think about when we're when we're layering white on white today. Um, think about shadows that can come out um, of that. But she'll also use like image transfers, stitching, um, all kinds of different techniques with her work. Um, there's a really fun article I found that I'm sharing here. There's a video on it. You could um, check it later. It's uh, posted on Vox website um, called Why These All White Paintings Are in Museums. And they explore all different kinds of artists and famous artworks that are just white on white and um, the significance of them. So that's a really fun link um, and a really cute short video um, that you can watch anytime. Can I use gesso instead of white acrylic paint? For today's project, absolutely. Yes. If you're painting like, let's say a portrait, I don't advise substituting gesso for your titanium white acrylic. Um, it's just a lot chalkier. I think there's like calcium or calcite in it or something. It's a much chalkier material and it doesn't blend with the other colors in the same way. It's, it's a little bit more challenging that way. I've used it in desperation as a backup and I can tell you it doesn't work as well. It's not as creamy as just white acrylic out of a tube. But yeah, gesso's great also because you know you buy a big thing of it and you can cover a lot of stuff with it. So that's why it's a really nice material to have on hand. Um, okay, so I thought we would start, maybe you've done this, thought we would get messy to start with and create more textures on some of these surfaces um, and just look at different ways to do that. So I'm going to angle my camera down that way and move this out of the way. I mean, my desktop, this is a canvas that I put over my desk. But someday I just feel like I will use this in a painting um, because of all these wonderful things that have happened to it. Um, so what we do today might be something you can use um, as a background in a future work of art, or you might just like what happens um, today and just keep it like this. The thing I like about using like white on white is that you can make your painting as messy and jumbled and chaotic as you want, but the white kind of um, calms it all down and <laughs> brings it all, um, it quiets everything, it quiets the noise a little bit. Okay, I have got some tissue paper. I've got this beautiful paper. I don't know if you can see that. It is so lovely. I don't know if I want to use that just yet. Check your waste bin. I'm doing that right now. I've got these old paper towels uh, with paint stuck to them. I'm going to use some of those. Um, but what we're going to do is create a texture with our paper on our canvas. So my gesso is still a little bit wet and I can even just stick this right into it since it's wet. You can take more gesso or white paint or you can use your clear glazing fluid or even Elmer's glue and mix all of that. I've got some paint in my brush and I'm just starting to um, paint that down. The acrylics um, in 
the paint are going to make this a nice hard surface. So when it dries, it's gonna be this really cool um, texture that you can work on some more. Um, Here's where it's gonna get kind of messy. I'm gonna take a dish like this. I'm gonna put some white paint in there. Now all of these products are compatible with each other. You can mix um, gesso with acrylic paint, with Elmer's glue. Um, I'm mixing some Elmer's glue with my acrylic paint right now. Hopefully it will come out. There we go. And that's going to make a slightly more transparent white adhesive. <laughs> I'm going to mix this all up. And what I'm doing, I want to create something that's kind of sludgy, soupy here. If you've ever worked with ceramics, think of like your ceramic slip, your uh, clay slip that you work with. You kind of want something that texture, something kind of sludgy. And what you can do with this mixture of basically polymers, adhesives, and some white paint is you can dip things into it and stick them to your piece of art. So fabrics, this is a really good thing to use for fabrics. Embroidery thread, if you have it, is really good. Um, coarser, heavier materials. This is a good thing to use. I have this piece of fabric and I'm gonna just cut um, a strip here. Dip that into your paint, into your substance thing. It's kind of like doing paper mache. This is really fun. I like doing this with embroidery floss, but I don't have any um, today. So now I'm going to use this to just create some kind of an interesting design. I mean, you could also do like a very calculated drawing with this if you wanted to. Um, it's very subtle, but you can see, you might not be able to see it on camera, but from where I'm sitting, I can see like these really neat curves with this. Um, and you can also play with how thick you're gonna make or how transparent you're gonna make your white. Like I said, this is white on white, but you know, you can have your other colors coming through. So you might do this with long strips of fabric. You might do this with smaller pieces of material, but this is just a really good way to get the material into to, to get that like white paint adhesive-y product into your fabric. Let's say you don't want to, to cover up your fabric. Maybe you have a really cool like print or design or something. You can just use your clear 
Um, either your clear glazing fluid sometimes works, sometimes it's not strong enough, or just clear um, gel medium. So I'll show you an example of that. Um, you just, you need a lot of water though. I mean, basically I just, oops, I have too much weight. I'm gonna grab some of this. You might paint under it, over it. I just use it to um, get it all down. You could fold up your things to get a little more texture. Um, and you can just layer things. Like I have this amazing, you know, when the when your canvas is really wet like this, you can just keep layering things. This is this gorgeous um, material that I'm gonna just press onto there. So yeah, with that painting coming through underneath a little bit, I really like that. Like the white just pushes everything back to the same level. Um, other things you can try, I mean, basically what we're doing is we're getting our canvas really gunked up with a lot of um, gluey, uh, plasticky polymers and paint and then we're cramming our <laughs> our fabrics our materials in in there um, for these neat textures something I've really enjoyed doing in the past is I'll get a pencil and a little um, pencil sharpener and maybe I will have this um, luminescent product here. This pearly product. So you can play around with like pearly things, sparkly things, matte things, um, and just observe the subtleties of all of them. So I have this kind of pearly white paint that I'm gonna put down here. And then what I like to do is take my pencil and just sharpen it <laughs> into that and get these little uh, pencil shavings. If you have like a, a collection of pencil shavings, like a, if you have like a pencil sharpener, those are really fun to use for creating texture also. And color pencils are really fun for this. Um, I think I have some somewhere. I have these watercolor pencils. So let's see how this works. So we're using white as our primary um, jumping off point. Any other color, any other form is really going to pop out. So I'm getting like these cool little sprinkles of color on here. I'm gonna use green. This isn't quite gold, it's yellow. Um, green, 
white and gold were the colors of the suffragettes. No, suffragists. So there's a difference between suffragettes and suffragists, I learned. So I'm using green and yellow, um, which were the colors green, gold, and white and purple were the colors of the suffra suffragist movement in England, right? And then in the US, it was purple, green, white. No, I have an article on it. If someone knows, feel free to <laughs> correct me. Okay, the difference between the suffragists and the suffragettes in England was that the suffragettes were, they were the ones that were, well, they were doing like a little more direct action, um, breaking windows um, and such. Um, they were a little bit more militant and the suffragists, suffragists, Gosh, why am I, why is this so hard for me? Um, they were the ones that were marching, sticking to more um, conventional protest methods, but both groups were working together. In England, in the US, they started referring to women as suffragettes, like a cute little, it was a cute word for women. Um, and they didn't like it. They wanted to be called suffragettes, suffragists. <laughs> okay. So any of this, um, I also have this pile of dried up leaves over here, which I'm excited about. And I'm going to just crinkle that in there. Um, again, you can use a bunch of white paint for this. You could use a bunch of medium. I have this matte medium here. It looks white, but it will dry clear. I'm gonna just get gloppy with that. Take my leaves. And I'm going to crinkle these up and put those in there too. Or you could try to use like a, you can use um, you don't have to necessarily crush the leaf up, but mine are already so crinkled like that. I kind of like And then just press that into your canvas or leave it like this and let it dry. So we're just creating texture. This is what's great is if you use a lot of white, you'll be able to see all those different textures coming through. It really um, spotlights them highlights them if you push everything back to the same tone or value. Now I'm a big fan of sparkly meets coarse. So I usually like to, once I'm making something like this, that's real like kind of rough textured. I like to take a little bit of um, glitter and glitterize it um, because I just love that look, like sparkly meets coarse. Um, so you certainly have that option. Another thing I like to do is tissue paper. I have this gray tissue paper here. I 
And I take my clear glazing fluid. Yeah, don't, don't feel afraid to just get messy with these products and enjoy them. And I really do like when you, you get something really pretty and delicate like that um, in contrast with something more coarse. And that kind of thing will show up more uh, when you're doing these like white on white um, artworks. So with something, this paper, I'm gonna just use some clear gel medium on the back of this to adhere it. You could use um, Elmer's glue also. So the thing about, so, so women when they were protesting, this was also around the time when film and video, well, film, not video, film, uh, was becoming more popular and um, footage, documentary footage was being taken more. And so um, women started wearing all white in parades, um, partly as like a, a media branding technique, if you think about it, um, because they wanted to stand out in this black and white, <laughs> on these black and white reels, um, the white dress would stand out. Um, that, and also they were being perceived um, as being kind of like coarse or um, I guess masculine. Um, and they wanted to still kind of show like their femininity. So they began more and more to wear um, all white dresses and then a sash with the purple and um, gold or the purple and green. I think all of that's so interesting. And so now I think, you know, we, there's a lot of association in politics with um, like the white pantsuit or whatever, or white women wearing white, um, when voting to, to pay homage to that, that movement. Okay, so this is the messy stuff. I think I may have covered it all. I mean, you can just keep getting um, creative with this. I've got this gorgeous black lace here. I'm gonna dip this into my goo and see what happens. Because the thing that's nice is the stuff will dry slightly transparent. So those other colors will still pop through. Let's see, I kind of want to put it down here. I'm gonna use my fabric here as my cloth to wet my hands and um, maybe I'll use this in my art later. So yeah, just uh, other things you could try doing like take um, Q-tips when I mean, you can stack them, but I like to use the 
Q-tippy side, <laughs> the cotton side, um, and kind of pull that off. And then I can't, I hope I remember how to, how I did it, but put a little dot of glue down. Who's taken a while? Okay. Okay. So I dip that one side in there and then pull off the stick and then just leave <laughs> the, it's hard to see, just leave the little cottony thing in there. So I'm loosening it here and then putting it in upside down. and then pulling out the stick <laughs> and I get like this funny little row of cotton. Q-tip stuff. I have an example here where that turned out much better. Um, this is an old work I did. These are all these little cotton <laughs> thingies that kind of look like little cocoons or something um, that I did using that technique. That somehow it's it's worked out better with this one. Maybe the, the Q-tips were a little bit thicker and fuller. And then this is an example of using thread um, and just sort of painting with the thread, with the yarn here as well. So I hope you're getting messy and just enjoying this process. I am going to put this aside and let it dry a little bit and um, talk about different um, paper cutting techniques you might use in your artwork now. Um, so, let's put this away. I also just want to show this piece here where I used a little bit more negative space. This white I used as my background, and then I cut out these forms, these little ghost forms um, on top. And I feel like the white really accentuates those. Um, shapes. So this I would call negative space. Negative space is the space that comes in between things. So if you had, if you, if you end up just creating some kind of a texture like this, this could be a really nice backdrop in the future for um, some kind of you know, maybe a small sketch or something that you would um, adhere to the top of this. So you can just create these really wonderful backdrops. Um, another thing that I've done in the past is, and it kind of happened here, I adhered to this piece of paper and then pulled it up and like ripped it away. And sometimes that will give you an interesting surface as well. It, it happened for half of this. Um, so, you know, after these things dry, you can keep manipulating them also. But I want to talk a little bit about paper quilling. Um, I do have a link here that I'll share with you. 
Um, and it's a really cool like folk art technique um, using paper and it's a very precise technique. You can get paper quilling um, kits, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just cut up some strips of paper. And I find that this works best um, to use actually magazine paper. You could use old sketchbooks and stuff too and just see how it works. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna use these strips of paper and you're going to roll them up into a series of curly cues and um, different um, shapes. So you can do an S curl. You can get a full, like a like I said, you can get a quilling kit. However, um, I don't know. I'm just always the type that's like, wait, what do I have in front of me now? Um, if you get a quilling kit, it will come with a little tool that makes it a little bit easier to spin this. So you have something like that. Um, another design you might have. And this is something you can like, there's tons of craft videos on this as well. Um, just different, uh, different ways of curling the paper, different like teardrop shapes you can make, um, all different. I mean, there's a whole subculture here. Um, so just having a round one and maybe pinching one side will make it a little more of a teardrop. But so what I do is I start creating a bunch of these and just kind of putting them together like that. And then this will create a really nice texture as well on my paper. And I just use regular white paper, but um, what you can do is this and then spray paint it all afterwards. But I find it's a nice way to create a frame on something. So I'm just going to do a, a few of them here. I'll try to do some long ones. But so then what I do is, again, I'll get my glue out and I'll put it in a little dish. I did have a big bottle of glue somewhere. And then the way that I adhere this is I will just dip these right into the glue. And I'll get like a nice healthy application of glue on there. And then just stick it right on. So there's a good amount of glue there. And I just start like piling them together like this. Because I like how a lot of them look together. So that's basically the start of it. And you could just go around like a whole canvas this way. It's actually a really 
a sturdy structure as well when you do this paper quilling thing. It creates a really sturdy, like this will hold up really well. Yeah, and so then I would wanna do more and you can make the curls go up and around. You can do all kinds of things with that. So I'll just do a little of that. Um, I have this thing cut out already, this shape I'm gonna, maybe just cut around that and adhere that to my paper. Another thing you can do, is create texture and kind of waves in on your paper um, or on your canvas by folding your paper this way and tacking it down in different places that way. So you have texture coming out that way as well. Um, I think I showed earlier a weaving I did. It's just white strips of paper. It's the back of this, but something like that could get adhered into your um, artwork. But there's a lot that you can just do with the cut paper also. And then if you ever do want to just show a little more, like let's say you have this nice texture after everything has dried and you wanna just show it off a little bit more, what you can do is take a darker color. I'm gonna take a little bit of brown here, add some white, and then paint over your text, whatever your textured surface is. And it really highlights it, it really, it's almost like a stain. So I'm actually gonna take some paper and, and wipe some of that off. But you see how that stained that and, and really brought out the texture underneath. Final technique I want to show you is stencils. Stencils are really another awesome way to create visual texture as well as um, tactile, like actual texture. So what I will do is I take matte, I'll take my gel medium, something that's rigid. Modeling paste will work as well if you have it but you want something that's gonna be really rigid, that really um, holds up. So I am gonna take matte medium, putting some here on my palette, and I am gonna mix white paint into it, because like I said earlier, that dries clear. I want it to have a little bit of color. So I have some white paint from my palette here. And I'm gonna mix it in there. And I want a lot of it. I want it really goopy. The thing is happening where I'm just losing Losing everything. So I'm mixing white paint into a rigid medium. So that might be a gel medium. It might be modeling paste. Modeling paste is ideal. I don't have any right in front of me. I know I have some. <laughs> 
Just not sure where. The reason why is modeling paste dries white. So before you use any acrylic mediums or anything like that, make sure you know if it dries opaque or if it dries transparent. And then what I do is I take my card, my used up business card. I use a credit card, I don't even know what it is anymore. Um, and grab some of that. And then what I do is just smear it right on top. Like you're icing a cake. You want it to be nice and thick. Hmm. A little blobby, but you see this texture, this pattern that comes up and then that's also gonna dry and there'll be like a nice tactile texture to it as well. Um, so stencils are great for creating texture and just another layer in your white on white painting. And then like I said earlier, really play with um, opaque versus um, shiny, pearlescent, matte versus pearlescent. If you have it, this is like a... metallic silver paint. I'm gonna put a little bit of glitter on here. Because again, like I said, I love that um, contrast between shiny and coarse. And you might start with a dark background also and layer white on top of it. There's a lot of possibilities that you can do with this. Um, and then like I said, you might, this might be the jumping off point for um, a different painting. So actually this piece behind me, I didn't even plan to show that, but the piece behind me started this way. It started with a canvas I had painted over with white paint. And then I just started um, layering paper and layering things on top of it. Um, and it just sort of emerged from there. Um, so you might think about your white on white as being a background for something. Or another thing you can do is take little objects that you might have around and paint them all white and adhere them like an assemblage piece. That is um, more along the lines of Louise Nevelson and her approach to making art. Um, like I said before, I included a bunch of links um, down in the video description that um, I encourage you to check out another artist that uses a lot of white and also um, mixed media techniques um, is Mark Bradford. And here is um, his white painting, I believe it's called. Um, and he uses a lot of layers, a lot of um, embedded meaning um, in, in his paintings. Um, so I just love, yeah, just creating layers, creating texture, and then, um, you know, painting over it with white, pushing it back, maybe building up more layers, and just really kind of like um, exploring all of that. And then this way, it, it, it doesn't get out of control, visual chaos. And yeah, you could have like a neat, like with that piece behind me, there's, a, there's like some of these, little objects I painted off in the left corner, the right corner, <laughs> um, and then the rest of it is a little looser and more abstract. Um, so the last thing I wanted to share is this article, Symbols of the Women's Suffragette, Suffrage Movement. Um, 
Purple, white, and gold were used by the U.S. suffrage organizations. Purple, white, and green were used in England. And fun fact, does anyone know the first state that women got, got to vote? Wyoming. And it was like in the 1800s, it was way before all these other states because there were so many women that lived there. So Wyoming is, I can't remember the exact date, but it was way ahead of everyone else. It's pretty cool, <laughs> actually. Um, and there was just such a small number of people living there. Um, I just like that little fun fact, little trivia bit. Um, so I hope you all are doing okay out there. Um, again, um, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Um, check the video description for links for anything like that. Um, if you want to make a donation, awesome. Thank you everyone who has donated. That's great. Um, I love all of you. Please have like a really, um, what? <laughs> have a good week ahead. Um, keep in touch with your loved ones. Um, Anyone else have any final thoughts they want to share? Um, please send me whatever whatever artwork you make out of this. I'd love to see whatever you whatever you make. Thanks, Jamie. And yeah, thanks everyone. Um, next week we'll get back into some more actual painting. I can't remember what I said. Oh, self portrait with a smile. Get your smiles in your mirrors. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.